Welcome to KPOV's Critical Conversations podcast, dedicated to featuring unique perspectives, challenging mundane thought, and questioning the norm. Listen at kpov.org, on YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Did you ever read Walden's Pond by Thoreau? It's a classic read about economy and ecology. Hopefully, it won't be banned in our schools, but you never know. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Hi, my name is Udara Abesegura Bickett. You are the uh, Rethink Waste Program Manager, correct? Yep, that's correct. I'm so glad that somebody's uh, taking that particular bull by the horns. Uh, Can you start out by giving us a brief description of what Rethink Waste Project entails? Yeah, so the Rethink Waste Project is a program of the Environmental Center. Um, So at the Environmental Center, um, we work to embed sustainability in Central Oregon, and we do that primarily through education and advocacy related to um, energy, gardening programs, youth education, and waste. And so I manage the Rethink Waste Project. Um, We focused on um, educating and advocating um, with our local community on reduce, reuse, recycling, composting in that order, because that's the order in which we have the most impact. Well, and it's no small undertaking. I know that for sure. Uh, Most everybody I know certainly recycles, and I don't think we're taking it quite as seriously as we should be. And I'm assuming that that's part of what you do most importantly is educate the public. Yeah, yeah. We we do a lot of public education on the whole sort of scale of things from reduce, reuse, um, to recycle, to composting. And I think recycling gets a lot of attention because um, it's talked about a lot. Yeah, and um, it, it's something that is a very actionable, like obvious thing to do. So, um, yeah, we get a lot of questions on what's recyclable or not because it's also different in every community. But we also focus on reduce and reuse. Yes, and, and I think that's perhaps even more important, although because of our, our food uh, systems, we do end up with a, a mm-hmm. tremendous amount of plastic. And I personally am a little disappointed that more things aren't recycled, but I don't understand everything about it. Uh, and we have talked to uh, some of the waste disposal companies, and it's hard to get a good clear answer as to what happens to all this stuff. And I think it's really important. So mm-hmm. uh, let's let's uh, jump ahead. Um, why don't we talk about the re- repair cafe event? Because an awful lot of people have stuff that might need minor repair, and there are people out there that are highly skilled in this stuff. Uh, I'm kind of a, a, a fix it yourself guy, but certainly when it comes to electronics, it's a little baffling to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Repair Cafe is one of the um, sort of signature programs that we, or events that we host. Um, It's all about reduce and reuse, right? And um, Repair Cafes are held around the world. Um, The Environmental Center hosts the Central Oregon version of it. Um, And they're all about repairing repairing stuff together. Um, So what you can expect when you arrive at a Repair Cafe is... um, that you'll get in line and share what you have. Um, we'll, we'll do like an initial diagnosis of where it needs to go or what kind of fix it might need. And then um, you'll get assigned to a fixer station and you'll work with one of our really amazing fixer volunteers to fix it together. So it's all about sort of creating a sense of community and also um, showing, teaching people how to repair their own things and sort of passing down those skills um, within our community. So um, we host about three each year throughout Central Oregon. This next event will be um, July 19th, next Wednesday, 5.30 to 7.30. It'll be at the High Desert Music Hall in Redmond. Um, I'm happy to share more details if you have other questions about kind of the nuts and bolts of the Repair Cafe. Yeah, and I also want to give a high uh, shout out to the High Desert Music Hall. They have been involved in a number of community-wide issues, and it's great to see them take part in this, uh, I, I couldn't 
appreciate it more. As a matter of fact, recently I repaired a heating pad that my wife uses and I had almost forgot how to use a soldering iron, but I found <laughs> that my dad left me and I managed to fix it myself. And I, I think that that's the real value in it is you don't necessarily just get your uh, whatever it is repaired, but you learn how to repair it. And when something else breaks, you're just a little bit braver the next time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's all about empowering people to fix their own stuff. And that kind of goes hand in hand with some of the policy pieces we've been um, trying to support around right to repair um, in the state of Oregon as well. Yeah. And I think we've seen that issue really glaringly within uh, the farm, uh, mm -hmm. the farm the farm machines that are used are have become so complex that, that it's difficult for them to repair. And boy, I like eating. I've gotten used to it and I want to keep eating and I want to make everything I can as easy as I can for our farmers. It, it's a, a, a really challenging situation. Um, you know, uh, I'd like to give you an opportunity if you have more to say about the repair cafe, uh, how many how many people do you expect to be doing repairs or helping with repairs? Yeah, so this time around we have eleven fixers, um, and we have two jewelry uh, fixers, three electronics fixers, um, two working, two other fixers working on small appliances or mechanical fixes. Um, two folks from the year uh, will be working on gear or heavy duty sewing projects. We have another clothing sewer. Um, and then we have, um, somebody from the high desert makers doc, who's kind of like a, and anything like when we have surprise <laughs> repairs, um, we'll tackle some of those. And so, yeah, we have a pretty wide variety uh, of repairs. I think, um, you know, if you're not sure if it can be fixed, I say, bring it, um, and we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I was yeah. going to say, it's going to lend some positive credibility to the term fixer. We've heard fixer yeah. <laughs> used in such a negative context recently with all of our legal struggles in our country, these guys are actually going to do something that's beneficial. And that's always yeah. a great thing. And I, I think we need to, to acknowledge the fact that uh, they are donating this time, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So we have, um, you know, folks that are um, really skilled um, hobbyists, or retired um, repair techs, or people who are currently working in a variety of um, local repair businesses. So um, these, all these folks are volunteering their time to be here and be part of this um, important um, community resource. Yeah, I can't think anything right offhand that I'm going to have fixed, but I am going to go attend the event because they do live in Redmond. And I think it's one of those things that's community building, which I don't think the word community can be used often enough. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's also our 10 year anniversary of Repair Cafe in Central Oregon. So we have these little extra components. And in this one, we also have an e waste collection event. And so um, folks can bring a variety of um, e-waste materials to the event. Um, and so you can check out on our website which one we're having at the event. And any other um, e-waste materials, we can also redirect you to one of the transfer stations if we're not able to accept it at the event. Yeah, and I think that's a, a really important aspect because we have become so dependent on electronic devices and some of them just don't last that long. And it seems almost criminal to put a lot of those really important metals, you know, basically back in the ground without reusing them. I, I, you know, I, I can't say how much I appreciate almost anybody who's involved in environmental protection, what a what a great thing they're doing for everybody. And, you know, obviously that includes you and your staff and, and the people that volunteer. And I'm so happy that there's people like you. It's, <laughs> it's really great. Um, shall we talk a little bit? If, did we cover everything that you want to cover about the repair cafe? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, I think this next uh, issue is, isn't an issue, but this next program is really important. Uh, the community innovation fund, uh, so it's funding projects throughout Deschutes County and has some updates to share, including a new database of projects on your website. So why don't you yeah. tell us about that? Yeah, yeah. So the Community Innovation Fund, um, this this is actually the fourth year we're carrying it out, but it's 
um, in this fourth year, we've really expanded the, the program. So the Community Innovation Fund, or CIF, it's a funding program that supports individuals, businesses, uh, community organizations throughout Deschutes County to advance projects that aim to reduce, reuse, recycle, or compost waste. Um, we also provide support for folks who maybe have just like a bud of an idea to really successfully plan the project, um, complete an application, and then um, we are also available throughout the implementation process and evaluation to, um, to make sure that these projects are successful. And um, the showcase we just launched this year is sort of part of the expansion um, of the Community Innovation Fund so that we have a catalog or like a database that's visually um, appealing and easy to navigate for folks on our website. Um, if you want to do something, but you're not sure where to get started, you can read all about the projects that have been taking place um, over the past three years now. Um, so you can get some inspiration to start your own projects or um, get a sense of where to start or what kinds of projects are available to you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention just a real short story. I remember when I first entered the workforce, uh, one of the people that I worked with said, I want to hear every idea you have, even though you're a new worker, because sometimes there's just a lot of stuff that's overlooked. And I'm sure those are the kind of ideas you're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah. So this past cycle, we have three award cycles each year. Um, this past one in April, we awarded the High Desert Food and Farm Alliance um, to support their Grow and Give program um, through the addition of four additional uh, insulated coolers so that they can collect more food um, at various locations. Um, we also funded a student honors project at Cascades Academy to test out a compost system at their school um, and a number of other really great projects. So yeah, this is a great way to get some ideas on projects, but if you have something outside of what's in the showcase, that's totally welcome too. And we're happy to work through those project ideas with folks. That's outstanding. I, I, I simply can't applaud this work enough. It's so vitally important at this particular time in our culture, in our world, you know, what we do here, each one of us affects our world outcome and we need to start thinking that way. Uh, you have a web survey. Could you tell us a little bit about the web survey? Yeah. So a lot of the programming um, or information that we provide is on our website, rethinkwasteproject.org. Um, you can also get there through envirocenter.org. Um, but a lot of our resources live on the website. We also do in-person events. So each year we're kind of curious about what kind of information were you looking for on the website? Um, did you find it? And, um, or did you not find it? Right. We want to know, we want to know all of that. And so um, we're running a survey through um, the end of the month this um, in July to um, track that information and, you know, and improve the, usability of the web resources we have or, you know, add information. If a lot of folks are asking about composting, then we know we need some more information on composting on the website. So um, it'll really help us um, improve the education that we have um, on the web and in other digital platforms. Um, and for folks' time taking the survey, we have a, a raffle available to um, two $50 gift cards to GearFix or Locavore. You know, I have a, an unusual question to ask you. Uh, on the staff over there, are the majority of the people that are on staff, are they fairly young individuals like yourself? That's a good question. Um, I don't know that I know the ages of all the people on our team. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of folks that have been around since like the start of our programming. Um, and there's also our, our, our the Environmental Center has grown a lot. So they're are also a lot of new folks on the team. So um, in terms of like length of time at the Environmental Center, there's quite a variety there. What I think most importantly is uh, I appreciate the fact that the young people that get involved directly. One more thing before we uh, have to uh, go from the show. How about reusable dishware checkout system? Yeah, so this is something we launched officially last summer. Um, we had dishware that was available for checkout, um, but now it's more open to the public um, and available. So we have three kits of 25 
units of plates, bowls, um, forks, knives, spoons, cups that um, anyone in the community can rent out for free from the Environmental Center. We have a form on our website. So if you're hosting like birthday parties, office parties, um, a really big family lunch, um, you know, whatever it is, you're welcome to check these out. Um, you can reserve them in advance um, and then use them at your event and bring them back clean to us. So, you know, it's plastic free July this month and we're really trying to um, get folks to think about reuse as an option um, as a way to reduce your single use plastic usage. Um, this is a great way to do that. And we just got a kit um, out at the Redmond Library of Things as well. So if you're in Redmond and you don't want to make it out to the Environmental Center to pick up your kit, you can also get one um, at the library in Redmond. Very cool. I, I, I have to say that's a great idea. Uh, I I hate to see all the stuff we end up throwing away. It just seems almost unconscionable to do it. Uh, in in uh, our final minute or so, uh, why don't you talk about how people can get in touch with the Environmental Center? Yeah, so you can reach us at envirocenter.org. That's our website. Um, or, or if you're trying to email us, you can reach us at info at envirocenter.org. Um, otherwise, you can show up at the Repair Cafe next Wednesday um, and say hi. Um, next Wednesday, 5.30 to 7.30. We'll be there at oh. the High Desert Music Hall. <laughs> Outstanding. Yeah, I, thank you so much for tr helping us all shrink our footprint. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me this morning. Thank you for listening to KPOV's Critical Conversations podcast. To hear weekly interviews on important topics, please visit kpov.org slash critical conversations and follow KPOV High Desert Community Radio on Facebook, YouTube, and your favorite podcast app.